On this video, we're going to talk about the cardiac cycle and how that cardiac cycle relates to pressure changes in the left side of the heart. So we're going to look at three structures on the left side of the heart. The first one will be the left atrium. And we know that's the chamber at the top of the heart on the left hand side. Underneath the left atrium is the left ventricle. Uh, we'll talk about the pressure inside the left ventricle. We know that's going to have to build nice and high to be able to pump the blood uh, around the body. The third structure is the main artery that exits the left ventricle called the aorta. And that's the main artery in the body where we find the highest blood pressure because uh, it's nearest obviously to, um, to the heart, to the left ventricle. So we're going to start with uh, the atria, the left atrium. And we're going to start with atrial uh, diastole. Now, you can just write diastole, but diastole is how we pronounce it. And that means relaxation. So this green bar at the top represents the time where the heart is in atrial diastole or relaxation. So if we just write above that, relaxation, relaxation, where the cardiac muscle of the atrial wall is relaxed, uh, and that means actually the chamber is probably at its largest volume. Now, we're going to start with the left atrium pressure, which is represented by the blue line uh, across the bottom of the graph. So if we look at the points about 100 milliseconds onwards, where the left atrium is relaxed, we can see the, uh, the blue line or the pressure in the left atrium starts slowly to increase. Now that's because the left atrium, if we look at the picture at the top right here, I'll just circle the left atrium. We know it's in diastole, so that is nice and relaxed. And when it's relaxed, it starts to fill back up with blood. So as it fills with blood, the pressure inside the left atrium starts to increase. Now, it's not contracted yet. It's, it, it's nice and relaxed. Uh, and that allows the left atrium to completely fill with blood. Now, as the left atrium fills with blood, we know the pressure increases. And when that pressure in the left atrium goes above the pressure, in the left ventricle, we know the atrioventricular valve or the AV valve is going to open. So if we circle this part here on the graph, we can actually see that uh, the pressure in the left atrium, represented by the blue line, is above the pressure in the left ventricle beneath it. And that forces the AV valve open, so the blood starts to trickle down into the relaxed ventricle. So at this point, the left ventricle is also in diastole, or it's nice and relaxed. The left atrium is nice and relaxed. It's filled completely with blood. That opens the AV valve because of the higher pressure. It forces some of the blood to go down into the empty left ventricle, and that's going to start to fill up with blood. So if we look at the red line on the bottom, the pressure in the left atrium, we can see at around 500 milliseconds, the pressure in the left atrium, uh, sorry, left ventricle also starts to increase as it starts to fill up with blood in the relaxed state. Now, when the AV valve opens, there is actually a dip in the left atrium pressure, as indicated by this arrow. And that's because the blood has started to leave the left atrium and fill up the left ventricle. So there's going to be a decrease in pressure as it leaves the left atrium. But we know blood is still coming into the left atrium, so even though it's, it's going down into the left ventricle, the pressure does start to increase slightly because it's still filling up with blood. Now at this point, both the left atrium and the left ventricle are relaxed. But if we look on the, uh, the graph at zero milliseconds, we can actually see there's a little bump in the pressure in the left atrium. And this is where the left atrium starts to contract, called systole. So if you look at the top of this slide, we can see the pink box at the top represents contraction of the left atrium. So we'll put in contraction. 
Now this ensures that the remaining third of the blood in the left atrium is squeezed and forced down into the nice relaxed left ventricle. And that ensures the left ventricle completely fills up with blood before itself starts to contract. So about two thirds of the blood uh, passively move down from the left atrium to the left ventricle. The last third of the blood is actively squeezed under atrial systole or atrial contraction down into the relaxed ventricle. Now at 100 milliseconds, what we can see is the pressure in the left ventricle is going to start to rapidly increase. And that's because the left ventricle, when it's completely full with blood, it starts to contract from the apex upwards. So we know the left ventricle is completely filled with blood. We know it's nice and relaxed, but then it's going to start to contract from the apex upwards. Now, as soon as it does that, the AV valve that separates the left atrium and the left ventricle closes. It snaps shut straight away. And that's to prevent any blood going back up into the left atrium. Because obviously we don't want the blood to go back into the atrium. We want to build a nice high pressure in the left ventricle, which is going to pump the blood under the high pressure through both the pulmonary and the systemic circulation. Now, at this point, 100 milliseconds, we know the left ventricle has started to contract from the apex upwards. And we know the AV valve is closed to prevent backflow of blood into the left atrium. But at this point, the semilunar valve is also closed. So what we have at this point here is a contraction of the left ventricle from the bottom up. The volume of blood in the left ventricle stays the same because the left AV valve is closed and the semilunar valve is closed, so it's a closed chamber. But the volume or the size of the left ventricle is getting smaller because it's contracting. So as the chamber gets smaller, we still have the same volume of blood called the isometric volume. So the pressure rapidly builds. So we can see there's a rapid increase in left ventricle pressure represented by the red line which increases dramatically on the graph. So this uh, red line, the, the pressure in the left ventricle in millimeters of mercury rapidly increases. Here the AV valve is closed and also the semilunar valve is closed. We have an isometric volume of blood. That means it stays the same. But the chamber, the left ventricle, is getting smaller and smaller, and it builds a big high pressure. Now, if we looked at the right-hand side of the heart, we'd see a similar graph, but the pressure would actually not get to the same level. It would be a lot lower because we know the pressure in the right side of the heart, the right ventricle, has to be enough just to pump the blood up through the pulmonary arteries to the lungs, which is actually quite close to the heart. It's a shorter distance. Now, in the left ventricle, the pressure has to be very, very high because it has to go around the systemic circulation, which is a much further distance around the body. Now, as the pressure builds in the left ventricle, what we'll see is the semilunar valve is actually going to open, and that's going to allow the blood under very high pressure to move into the aorta. So that blood, very high pressure in the left ventricle, it forces open the semilunar valve, it forces the blood under high pressure into the aorta. And then what we see is the left ventricle pressure keeps going up. And that's because it hasn't quite finished contracting yet. It's still contracting all the way from the bottom up to the top to squeeze all the blood up into the aorta. So we can see the aorta pressure also increases as the blood is being forced into it under high pressure through that open semilunar valve. Now, when the left ventricle has finished contracting systole, 
the pressure in the left ventricle is going to drop dramatically. And when it drops in the left ventricle, um, to prevent the backflow of blood into that left ventricle from the aorta, the semilunar valve closes to prevent, put this here, prevent backflow, backflow of blood into the left ventricle. And that helps to keep the uh, pressure inside the aorta very high. So we can actually read off the graph and we can see the minimum aorta pressure here is 80 millimeters of mercury. And the highest blood pressure is just above 120. So here it's about 122 or so. So when we take a, a blood pressure measurement, it's from the brachial artery in the left arm. And we normally get two values and it's healthy blood pressure is about 120 over 80. So the 120 value represents ventricular systole or contraction of the left ventricle to force the blood under high pressure into the aorta. And the 80 value represents diastole, which is the lowest of the values. Um, and that's about 80 on our uh, graph here. Now, if we look at the semilunar valve closing at this point up here, we know the left ventricle has relaxed, so it's in diastole. So there's a rapid decrease in pressure in the left ventricle. Now, at this point, we know the pressure drops dramatically because the left ventricle is in diastole. So it's nice and uh, relaxed at this point. It's kind of nice, big shape, big volume. And there's actually no blood inside the left ventricle or very little blood because it's all been forced up into the aorta. So we know the semilunar valve here is closed. And we also know the AV valve is also closed. But this time, there's no blood in the left ventricle. The left ventricle is relaxing. It's under diastole. So the pressure rapidly drops. Now, we know during this uh, ventricular diastole at this point, The left atrium is also in a relaxed state, diastole. So we know even prior to this point, the left atrium has started to fill back up with blood. So as the pressure in the left ventricle drops dramatically, it drops beneath the pressure in the left atrium in diastole. So that opens the AV valve once again, and the blood starts to trickle down into the relaxed left ventricle, and it starts to fill back up with blood. Now we know the um, left atrium, it continues to, to fill up with blood. So it continues to move down through the open AV valve into the left uh, ventricle and the cycle repeats itself. So at zero milliseconds, we have a second heartbeat, part of the second trace. We know the left atrium will undergo uh, systole or contraction that forces the last third of the blood from the left atrium down into the left ventricle through the open AV valve. We know at 100 milliseconds, the left ventricle contract from the apex upwards. That immediately closes the left AV valve. We know the semilunar valve is also closed. We know the chamber gets smaller and smaller as it contracts. There's an isometric volume of blood, so the pressure builds rapidly. Uh, semilunar valve above the left ventricle is then forced open to allow the blood into the aorta. The left ventricle continues to squeeze until it's forced all the blood up and out into the aorta. And we know as the aorta pressure increases above that of the left ventricle, the semilunar valve closes and that prevents the backflow of blood. And then the left ventricle uh, undergoes diastole, once again, relaxation. Now we know the aorta, it has... Um, a typical structure of an artery. The uh, collagen on the outside prevents overstretching of the aorta when the blood passes through it. It has a thick tunica media made of smooth muscle and elastic fibers. Now the big thick smooth muscle 
uh, withstands the nice high blood pressure in the aorta. The elastic fibers allow elastic recoil, which allows maintenance of a high blood pressure. It brings the um, artery wall back into its original uh, structure. And we know the semilune valves snap shut to prevent backflow of blood and keep the uh, blood pressure also nice and high as it moves away through the aorta into the systemic blood circulation. Now, there's always two sounds in a heartbeat. It's called lub and dub. So we'll look at the first sound, the lub sound here. Now that corresponds to the AV valve closing. So when that AV valve closes, it makes a lub sound. So the heartbeat is lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. Now the second sound, the dub sound, is actually when the blood under very high pressure is forced through the semilunar valve and that snaps shut when the pressure in the aorta becomes higher than the left ventricle. So the dub sound is the closing of the semilunar valve. So lub is AV valve closes, corresponding to ventricular contraction. Dub sound is the semilunar valve closing um, when the, the pressure in the aorta is higher than the left ventricle. So it goes lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. Now, the only other point we want to make very briefly on this uh, graph, when you see this little bump at 100 milliseconds in the left atrial pressure, so I'll just highlight this in orange. So this little bump here on the left. Now we know at this point, the left ventricle has started to contract, but we know the AV valve has closed but as the blood pressure builds in the left ventricle, because we know the heart is a pump, the septum between the ventricle, the left ventricle, and the left atrium above it pushes upwards slightly because of that high blood pressure as the, the ventricle gets smaller. And that pushing of the septum between the, at sorry, the ventricle and the atrium causes a small increase in the blood pressure in the left atrium as it started to fill back up with blood because it's under diastole or relaxation. So that's why you get a little bump in the left atrium pressure after the left uh, AV valve has, has closed.